Welcome to the King's Speech premiere tonight, and we want to thank our generous sponsors, Dillion Tequila, which I'm planning to drink a lot of tonight, and, and get the cast drunk as well, AOL, and the Royalton Hotel. I also want to acknowledge a number of um, institutions that are here tonight, including the American Institute of Stuttering, our time. <laughs> which is such a historic um, place to screen this film. It's the first premiere I've had at the Zeke Fell, so I'm very honored to be here. Uh, the story of this film, the story of how this film was made, begins in the Second World War. The stalk who had a dreadful stammer. And that small boy used to listen to King George VI on the radio during the war and think, if the King of England can cope with the stammer, maybe there's hope for me. That small boy was our writer, David Seidler. Mm -hmm. And David grew up uh, with King George VI being his childhood hero, his inspiration, his guiding light, and he long dreamed of writing about King George VI. And it was only after he wrote Tucker, his man and his dream for Francis Ford Coppola, that he finally felt he could turn to this subject so close to heart. And he began to research this and get blips on the radar of one Lionel Logue speech therapist to the king, and he tracked down Valentine Logue, Lionel's son, um, and Valentine had a handwritten diary of his father, a diary account of the relationship with the king, and he said, but you have to write to the palace first. So David Judy wrote to the palace, 
And the Queen Mother wrote back to David and said, yes, but please, not in my lifetime. Memories of these events are still too painful. And so David waited, little realizing the Queen Mother was going to live to 186. <laughs> Um, and so it was a while later uh, that David finally sat down um, to, to write this script. Uh, it's a magnificent script. When I read it, uh, I knew it was my next movie. Ladies and gentlemen, David Sun. And the, uh, the epilogue to that story is David, when he wrote the script, had lost track of the loaves uh, and so wrote it without uh, being able to see these diaries. And nine weeks before the shoot, we tracked down the grandson of Lionel Loeb, living 10 minutes away from me in London. And this treasure trove, this handwritten account of the relationship between the king and the therapist came into my hands. And it was uh, an account that no historian has ever read, no royal biographer has ever read, no member of the royal family has ever read. And we got to read it first. And so we set about rewriting it with David's help uh, to get uh, some of the best lines. And some of the best, you know, there are a couple of the best lines, 99% are David's, but a couple of the best lines were actually written by King George VI and Lionel Logue. Um, I now want to introduce you to the star of this film. This man is fiercely bright, um, uh, fiercely well-researched. Uh, he's been a, a, a tremendous joy to work with. In fact, working with him has been one of the great experiences of my life. Uh, he's as nice as everyone thinks he is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Colfer. <laughs> um, his co-star, Jeffrey Rush, cannot be here tonight um, because he's uh, busy working with um, the Jer Jerry Bruckheimer Productions, filming us uh, tomorrow morning the scene uh, in the Fountain of Youth, where he uh, amazingly discovers how to be young again, uh, a theme I know this audience won't know much about in New York. Um, but uh, I'm pleased to say that it makes me m much easier to introduce uh, Colin's co-star, who um, did struggle slightly with feelings of jealousy about the uh, deep love between Jeffrey and Colin. And so I'm, I'm very pleased that there's no rival this time on stage as we introduce uh, the genius, the wonderful Helena Bonham Carter. Um, and lastly, I'd like to introduce my producing team, Gareth Unwin, who uh, had the great sense to recognize um, in play form that the script that David uh, wrote would make a great movie. Uh, Ian Canning, who was uh, with me day in, day out during the shoot, and his Australian producing partner, Emil Sherman, because this is genuinely uh, a half Australian, um, half uh, English co-production, Gareth, Emil, and Ian. I'd like to thank Harvey and Bob Weinstein. Harvey, you believed in this movie when no one else was willing to uh, uh, take a chance on it. Um, and you believed on it, uh, believed in it very early in the process, and I'm incredibly grateful uh, for your early belief which made the film possible. Um, I'm the son of an Australian mother and English father, so this film uh, has particular resonance for me. Uh, and all I'd like to say is I know a thing or two about an Aussie mum unpacking the effects uh, on an Englishman of his childhood upbringing. Um, I hope you will enjoy it. It's a huge honor to be here tonight, uh, and I look forward to seeing you afterwards. Thank you so much.